you have one, would you like to, to, to imagine what is outside the picture, from the top side? This is half a picture, what do you think is up on the other half? Just, just one very quick minute. It's back. It's back. Somebody's standing on the back. Somebody's standing on the back, maybe? I don't know. What do you think? It's back. Yes. Okay, what do you think is on, on the other side? What is happening on the other half of the picture? A child. A child? What is a child doing? S sitting on it. Sitting, uh, okay, all right, sitting on the adult. What else? These are two people actually. This is one person. <laughs> Any ideas? Any ideas? Yeah? Uh, the shorts got caught in the ventilator above. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Okay, here is what actually happens. Okay, this is what's on the other side. These are typically simple activities where you can find funny pictures or even very simple pictures and cut them in half and ask the students to imagine what is on the other half to increase visualization and visual imagination okay i have a couple of other examples uh, what do you think is at the top half of this picture Darth, Darth Vader in a business suit? Why not? Why not? Okay. I mean, you can find your sources of pictures any way you like. This is a statue with its head stuck into a wall. Uh, perhaps after the students can imagine what is happening on the other side of the picture, then you can show them the real picture and you can have a little discussion. Uh, here's another type of activity. Uh, What's on the other side, half of the picture? The students can imagine. And here you can give them an element of surprise. Here is what is on the other side. Then perhaps take it a step further and work on the concept of improvisation. Can you improvise the conversation with all three people? Also, what are they saying? What are they thinking? Right, it's the thought bubbles as well. <laughs> what are they thinking? What are they saying? Another favorite picture activity of mine is called Crazy Captions. And I was inspired by Spike Milligan, who is a great, I should have mentioned credits to Spike Milligan as well for his talk, for this talk. Um, and in a little book called Transport of Delights, uh, where he looks at different pictures for different means of transportation, actually. It doesn't have anything to do with delight. He takes very ordinary pictures and he, he writes, the strangest captions and I find that this is a very uh, worthwhile activity for language because it's free it stimulates the imagination uh, and, and they can write whatever they like um, if, if some of you remember some of the uh, stuff that I've been talked about recently on course mix but and I'm, I apologize I apologize to the rest of the audience I've been talking about the paradox um, uh, exploiting the sense Tickling the student's funny bone, exploiting the sex, the, their sense of the paradox of, of thinking along kind of crazy paths to stimulate their imagination. This one is a nice example in which Spike Milligan writes the following. The Irish hydrobike. This bike is for crossing shallow fords. The bike is collected at the bank of the stream. Then the passenger runs quickly with it to the other side, where he discards it, leaving it ready for a return crossing. The beauty of this bike is you don't have to ride it. Okay, I mean, if this is not silly, I don't know what is. So, um, very often we've done this in my school in pre digital times. You know, I've got, it's not, nothing to do with working uh, with digital material. And what we usually do, if they do an activity like that, we stick the pictures on the wall, and it's like a gallery, 
and the class goes round and they look at the different captions and we have a laughing meter timer. So someone sits and measures laughing time. How much laughs, you know, by seconds. Laughing time in front of pictures and that's the winning one. The one that generated the most seconds in terms of laughing time. But real laughing, not, <laughs> you know, real laughter. Okay? Right, I'm going to move away from pictures and to Bono, although he has quite a lot of interesting ideas in his book, Lateral Thinking, and they're really ideas that you can very, very easily exploit. And I'm going to move to another area, another way of looking at creative thinking, uh, possibly a, a kind of expandable term. Are you familiar with the, uh, the term divergent and convergent production? Yeah? Well, uh, create, create, creative thinking is called di uh, conver uh, divergent production huh? and non-creative thinking, logical thinking, convergent uh, production. And convergent production is, um, is shown exactly by this diagram. There is one correct answer only and it's determined exclusively by facts. There is information, information, but the answer to this information is only one. There is only one correct answer. By contrast, creative thinking or divergent production, um, in, in this type of thinking you have the same one stimulus and poss possibly many different answers, possibly all correct. So there's a very different type of thinking. It's the one right answer thinking versus the multiple responses thinking that I want to work with, with more today. And if we want to relate a convergent production, non-creative thinking in terms of foreign language learning materials, uh, there are three things that are typical of these types of activities, three characteristics. Uh, they are based activities where the answer is based on the processing of facts. There's only one correct answer possible and the answer is uniquely determined by a language stimulus, by language material. Uh, on the other hand, by contrast, in divergent production, we have multiple answers that are possible, and there are, it's possible to have a variety of correct answers, and in addition, the answers are not totally determined by language. The language stimulus is not important. It can be some other stimulus, okay? So, if we look, at some activities, can I ask you to say convergent or divergent? All right, we'll play ping pong. All right, dictation. Convergent or divergent? Dictation. Divergent. Okay, convergent. Thank you very much. Uh, drilling. Um, Comprehension questions based on a text. Thank you. Uh, writing an additional paragraph to a story. Uh, filling in a flowchart after having listened to a story. Convergent. Improvising a story from five pictures. Okay. The idea is clear to you. So. I want to look at divergent production, which we said is doesn't matter, is not related to language input. Multiple answers are possible, and they can be varied answers. And my second major sales point for um, using this type of creative thinking activity in your classroom is that. Uh, if you have this type of thinking, I think someone has said it already, uh, your thinking, your ideas go off in all sorts of different directions. 
Now, this type of thinking facilitates problem solving. And it leads to a variety of answers. And that's why the business world is so keenly interested in this type of thinking. When they brainstorm marketing, ideas, solutions, product names, product appearance, they don't want to reproduce what the other brands are reproducing. They want their sales teams to be thinking along different paths, lots of different solutions. In a, a foreign language classroom, as uh, we envisage it today, which is problem solving oriented and discovery learning focused, I don't know what method or approach you have embraced in your teaching, but I would think that most educators would be interested in learner-centered learner classrooms where there is at least some discovery learning along the way to figure out the problems in this problem-solving focused learning type. Problem-solving abilities are very, very important. And uh, our students don't come with them in place. We need to help them develop the problem-solving skills. And that's uh, the reason why I'm thinking that it's very important. Now, I want to look at another way of looking at aspects of creativity. And I'm going to look at four main parameters. I'm not, looking, I'm not going to look at every single parameter of creative, creative thinking skills, because there are very many. And uh, um, uh, we, could, we could spend days looking at each particular facet or aspect. But I want to examine a little more closely four aspects of creative thinking that I believe are very closely related to language production and language acquisition. And I'm going to look at the uh, quality which is termed fluency. Uh, the second uh, aspect is called flexibility. The third one is called elaboration. And the last one is called originality as some of you have already uh, identified uh, one of the uh, characteristics. And um, I've made a little table here, uh, which I'm sorry if it's too fussy and busy for you to read, uh, shows uh, the element of creative thinking skills behavior and what it means on the left, and how it's related and linked to language production. So fluency, is being prolific, large quant quantities of ideas. In terms of language production, uh, it's related to easy and ready flow of talk. After all, isn't that what we mean when we say he's fluent? He talks easily. And also, uh, fluent users are not very laconic users. Um, we usually call people who are fluent people who produce a certain amount of talk, don't we? Um, and oh, that's why I put the term sustained talk here, rather than short bursts of talk. Flexibility is the ability to produce diverse ideas, not only many ideas, but ideas of different kinds. And in terms of language acquisition, I think it can be very easily linked to the ability to deal with the unpredictable that is very important in language uh, comprehension and production, to follow changes in the direction of the talk and respond to them, but also to be able to initiate such changes in conversational exchanges. Elaboration, which is the ability to add on to and embellish an already existing idea, which is a typical characteristic of a lot of creative thinkers and particularly of a lot of very important inventors who found something, the rudiment, the element of an idea existing in something, and they took it and they built on it and created something larger and fantastic that we could use. The same thing we can look at um, in terms of language production by giving our students practice in elaboration we give them the ability to avoid simplistic responses uh, uh, the, the, the short safe sentence type of syndrome 
ability to improve uh, using uh, not using set phrases and embellish them. Uh, and this is particularly a, a useful skill for writing uh, if you want to help the learners improve their writing and elaborate by avoiding using bare bones text. Uh, if, if that makes sense to you this term, not, not very simple uh, plain safe text. And it could be something that you do with their own text even. You give them back their own uh, bare bones text and you ask them to elaborate on it, build on it. Um, I think uh, Mrs. Uh, Penny Orr mentioned something yesterday when, in her Pachachka when she was saying add the words, add adjectives. That was a clearly an elaboration activity. Um, and finally, originality, the ability to produce uncommon and clever ideas, which is always associated with creative thinkers. And we don't necessarily uh, need our students to be innovators, but um, the ability to produce uh, novel utterances is important because it's part of language uh, production. And uh, perhaps it will help them to avoid using the cliche phrase. Does that make sense? Do you need a minute to talk about it and say boo? Could you, would you like a, a minute to just discuss these ideas together? Please. Just a quick minute until I find my next slide. Okay, I'll leave it off. There's some chairs there. I think there is a sub-level of elaboration and originality. When you add on the younger issues, you add on something new or something new. Yeah. 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 I guess the distinction is because collaboration is building into the whole of the exists and originality is creating something from the common. Any comment? Can you see how that could relate to ideas and activities in your lessons? Hmm? Any, any suggestions? Comments? I use the embellishing technique where I get the first perhaps for example writing pieces about the university they can put them on block and give that to the little and add ideas, yes. Okay. Um, and there are many activities uh, that you can do to develop each individual skill. For example, uh, to practice. Um, there are two things I want to say about these uh, aspects of creative thinking. That there will be um, application practice, which will be um, combination practice of all these parameters of creative thinking and that will be possibly in in the more complex type of project work story making website building blog writing wiki creation some of the complex skills up in the creative ladder that we saw in Bloom's taxonomy but that there is a need for individual practice uh, in a kind of more controlled, if you like, environment in the classroom. But I want to promote the idea of training the learners, providing them with a little training practice and not assuming that because we mentioned the skill that it will be automatically acquired, but it, it needs to be uh, not automatized. I mean, it's not a drill-like situation but they need to have a goal at it, okay? And some of the activities that we're going to look at have this purpose uh, in mind. A typical activity, and we can do it for one minute, and you can tell me which skill you think it generates, is called unusual uses, in which you uh, introduce a very ordinary object, and you have a competition in teams, 
in one minute, ten minutes, whatever time you have available, uh, your group, your team has to jot down as many unusual uses of this object as you can. Do you want to have a go for one minute? Okay, here's your object. A chair. Think of some unusual uses very quickly. You can use it uh, to hang your clothes on. Yes. To try to strength, to use it as a ladder. As a ladder, exactly 18 high. You have to put your laptop on. Exactly. So you can use it as a table. You can use it to keep you warm. Chop it up into the wood and burn it. You can use it as a drum to use the instrument. You can use it as a refined stool. Yes, very good. You can use it to turn lines. <laughs> Do you agree that it's unusual? Yes. 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 All the people are using it. As a desk. Okay. So it's not very uh, unusual here. So we accept it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What? <laughs> this, this side? So I'm using it as a, you know, to press the, uh, something that is glued. So I put it under the Press it down. Press it down and separate it. As a hammer. As a hammer. Ironing <laughs> board. As a ladder. To tame lions. To tame lions. <laughs> <laughs> to exercise. To exercise. To exercise. 